In previous videos, we mentioned an enhancement included in Genexus called Design System Object, which is an evolution of theme object and classes. This video shows how to use the object in design definitions for your app. If you analyze the homepage in the definitive app, you'll note that certain decisions remain in several screens, such as the color of buttons matching the title, or the title over a background image, which is also the case in the second screen, as well as the type and aspect of text that remain the same throughout the various screens. The regularity with the prevailing style and a uniform way of presenting information and standards for the whole app is a design system in action. To abstract the definitions, you use a series of objects such as master panels, panels, components, stencils, controls, and patterns. The definition of controls on screen as the main elements of the user interface is particularly important regardless of the screen they're on. So far, these definitions were made by means of the theme object that grouped the classes where the aspect of screen controls was defined. The design system object is an evolution of the theme object that reduces the gap between designers and developers, while preserving the general principle of Genexus, that is, expressing the most while writing the least. For example, consider the white title that appears in every screen over the photograph of each tourist attraction. You can abstract that common style by assigning to it the same size, font, and color, and calling it, for example, H1 white. H1 because it's a main title, and white because that will be the color used in cases that include a background image, as in this case. Likewise, you'll define this title here as H1 black. Further abstractions with other text would be, for example, defining the large title of the first page as H1 red, this text here as secondary title H2, and these here in red as text meant for an action, main action text, and this text here as regular or normal text, normal text. The names given to those abstractions would then be classes, on which you could base other texts in the application. Identifying these abstractions is in fact modeling the app's design system. The design system object enables you to concentrate all these abstractions in a single location where you may define the properties of each class. Before you start taking these classes to a design system object, you'll create a home panel that will be the startup object in your app. That means that the object that will be executed in the first place and will be the access point to all other screens in the app. The design is quite simpler than the one shown before. So, for the time being, you'll include some descriptive text, but not the buttons. Here you have the view home panel already created. Inside it, there's a canvas control, similar to a table, that will enable you to contain objects executed in various layers one on top of the other. That's the effect desired with the logo and the text to be shown over the background image. In the controls of the canvas, you'll see that now they all have a Z order property, that's the numeric value indicating which layer they're on. The greater the number, the higher they are. Inside the canvas is a table with its background image property associated with the background image desired. This table includes the Z order property with value zero, so its background image will be in the lowest part of the canvas. The logo image has Z order equals one, so it'll be seen over the background image. The text block with the main title is in the table located inside the first one, so it'll appear over the background image as well. Below the canvas shows a table containing another table on the left with two text blocks. 
one of them with the subtitle, The New Age of Exploration. And underneath it, the action title, Contact Us Today. To the right is a text block with a descriptive text about the travel agency. The title, Get Ready to Explore, will be read, with class H1 read. The subtitle, The New Age of Exploration, will have class H2. The link, Contact Us Today, will be of the main action text type. And the descriptive text will be normal text. All of these definitions will be done on a design system object. Now, you'll create a design system object called Travel Agency DSO. You'll see that it's positioned on a tab called Tokens, where it welcomes you to the Design Tokens editor and invites you to view a help demo. You'll also see that a Styles tab is created, where you'll define the classes for the main title, the subtitle, and so on, all seen before. The first thing is to write the structure that will contain the styles. You'll create the class h1red that will be used to define the main title. You must provide the style features for the class. For example, for the color, use a special red, written as hexadecimal. Then define the font size as 60 pixels and graphic bold, indicating an intense font weight that is bolder. These properties are identical to the CSS properties, but they're not the CSS properties since some are specific of Genexus and not defined in this standard. One could think that when the size is defined in pixels, that will be a fixed value for a platform. However, these pixels are automatically converted into dips. In the case of Angular, it will in fact be 60 actual pixels because one dip is one pixel. With a file from designers made in the sketch tool, you can inspect the file and obtain the exact properties that you should use in your design system object. When the text font is not a standard font, you must load it as a file and then declare it in the design system object. So let's add the fonts we have in the file by writing font family colon abhaya libre bold semicolon and src colon gx file and in parentheses indicate the name of the font file, apaya libre bold underscore ttf, and end with a semicolon. And then do the same for fonts graphic bold, graphic regular, and rubic medium. Now you must define the rest of the classes you'll need. H2, normal text, and main action text. And lastly, for the background image, you'll need to set up some properties. To that end, create a class, background image, and set the background repeat property with value no repeat, and background size with value cover. Now, to base your app's design on the design system object created, go to the properties of the KB version and in the default style property, assign the design system Travel Agency DSO. Then in the platform node, since the app will be used in your app generated in Angular, in the platform AnyWeb, we assign the style property in the design system object we created. And we execute the panel to view what we did.
with the application running, you'll note that all styles have been applied correctly, and each text has the style desired. Back to the design system object, you'll see certain values such as colors or fonts that could be abstracted and named. You'll call tokens the elements in this higher abstraction level. Now, go to the token section to define a token as color constant for the text to be located over a background surface, as in the case where they were located over a background image. To do this, in the color section, press the Add Your First Color Token button, and you'll see that a structure opens up for you to start writing. Let's call it on surface, and copy the hexadecimal value of the color value previously defined in the style. You can also define a color for the background, which is a type of white. For example, surface, and a highlight color for the red text as the title H1 red, and for the text that performs an action. Now you can go to Styles to modify the fixed value of color in the corresponding classes, changing it to the corresponding token. For instance, for class H1 red, in color, we select the name of the token and then select the value Highlight. And to the same for all colors that had fixed values. So, when you change the token, all styles based on the same token will be changing at once, allowing more flexibility and less chances for errors. You could also define other token types, such as for the font size. If you filter here by category and select Font Sizes, you'll see that the token is added for you to start writing. You may define a token for the font size in the main title, another one for the subtitle, and so on. And then, just like you did before, you go to the styles and change the corresponding token value. One thing that's possible in a design system object is to import definitions made in another design system object. For example, you may create a design system object called Travel Agency DSO Extended and import the DSO built before. To that end, you'll use the at import rule and the name of the design system object to be imported. In this case, you may reuse classes or tokens defined in the design system object that's imported. You could also overwrite the main design system object a property of an imported token or class, and in that case, the one taken will be the one defined in the target design system object. Or you may inherit from a class of the imported design system object and create another based on the previous one. To do this, the at include rule is used here with the name of the class to be overwritten, and you'll only add the property that will be changed while the rest remains with the value of the imported design system object. To execute the app on a different platform, like a mobile device, you may import the design system object and change only the things that must be adapted to the new platform, reusing all the rest. This video sums up how to create and modify a design system object and how to extend it by importing definitions of another design system object. Another possible way, which will be shown in another video, is to import a full design made by designers from Sketch. To learn more about the design system object, we invite you to visit the following wiki page.